what concerns me is um the whole eight unit thing and the scoring because it looks like arena scoring so <laughs> i'm not really sure what's going on there <laughs> okay we'll get to that but like okay sure anyways how about we just start with the concept first because that's the first thing they mentioned Story-wise, not that anyone really cares, but story-wise, we just fought the army of hell, and apparently Loki thought, like, this is a great time to attack, and then she comes with this giant or army, and therefore this mode now exists. What a dick move. <laughs> That's all I can say. I'm not surprised. Yep. I mean, that's the right thing. That's why, historically, people would make alliances with neighbors when they wage war against another country so they don't get attacked but yeah apparently we're fighting thor which is weird because i thought she was supposed to be a, a good character or she could be a good character and she's testing us i don't know gods are weird right but let's not think about why this is a thing let's just look in, more into the mode here's what i understand from brace for brace all you do is look at what's about to happen who you're about to fight and then deploy your heroes is that it? Uh, I assume so. That's what I, I assume so. Yeah, I, I, they really didn't explain this mode well at all. <laughs> so from what I can tell, guys, 50% of this mode is waiting. Brace is the same size as shield encounter combined. 50% of this mode is setting up. You literally have to wait days before you reach shield mode. I'm... I'm very confused because this is this makes it one of the shortest events because we saw shield encounter only lasting one day. Yeah. Uh, I I'm hoping it's like um multiple rounds. Because, yeah, something along those lines. Um, and I was thinking more along the lines of um uh the setup takes a few days. But it says the, five days until shield. That's a lot of days. Yeah, that's a lot of days, but I'm hoping it's like abyssal level difficulty since we do get like structures that help us clear it out a lot easier. So I'm hoping it's at least that level of difficulty because sure. if it's not, this is going to be a cakewalk and it's going to be boring. Yep. Yep. And we saw earlier that it's also going to utilize mythics as well. Mythic blessings, mythic... Well... I guess just blessings. And I guess the same idea as Ether Raids and just placing a structure for bonus stats. Yeah. But here's the thing, like... We don't change our Ether Raids teams every... Every week. Like, most people just set it and they just leave it. And that's what has me worried. Because I feel like that Brace mode is just... Not going to be very meaningful. I think a lot of people are just going to place the same things. Like, oh, we'll just put our best heroes in. I guess I guess there's always going to be some people who, who's changed things up. But I, what I think is going to happen, most likely, is just people are going to place their best heroes in. Right? Like, the, the hero that makes the most sense in the defense slot. The hero that makes the most sense in the red slot. The hero that makes the most sense in the, the speed slot. And then, of course, the attack pairing. You know? yeah. And I think feel like I feel like most of Brace is just, like, going to be the same team. And that they put way too much time for, to, for the Brace period. Now most of the event is waiting, then. Uh... I'll, I'll just wait and see to see what's going on with the mode because I'm not one to judge like the second it comes out. I know, uh, I know, I know. Of, like it's too early to say something about it, but that's what that's the impression I've gotten so far. Uh, the impression I've gotten so far, just like at a glance, it's a mix of every every mode we've gotten it, so it far. It is. It is. And at like in my mind, that could be pretty cool since we get structures in abyssal battle. So we get to use, like, because um, based on the trailer, it's like the towers are, like, controllable, like, duty units. So yeah. that I think I think that would be pretty fun if it's at, like, abyssal level difficulty because then you can actually use your units in, like, strategic ways and use the towers in strategic ways. So it could be pretty fun. But well, the I'm way all... they... Yeah. Yeah. But the way they've been presenting it so far, it's not really, like, giving us everything we need to know about it right so i'm i can't really say if it's going to be like that it could very well just be like like an easy mode like an easy easy time but 
that's the unfortunate part because every mode in this game that does not involve the player has ended up easy, right? Yeah. Roker Siege is easy. I mean, it's it's gonna. I'm I'm just seeing another another mode where we will only play advanced, and the only times we go under advanced is if we're, if we're auto battling. That's what I kind of see, and I I get it. Like it's it's interesting because basically everybody's a pair up hero. Basically, you got heroes that can move around, and then you got heroes that can't move around. You got structures of ether raids. Um, you even have the voting gauntlet concept of bonuses and, and not like it's it literally mixes everything together. That's a good idea. It's a fun idea. But I I I have my doubts. Like oh, you just saw that by the way. It's just like Grand Conquest where they target your structure over fighting the heroes, which makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah. Hmm. I just have to see what's up with the mode first before I can really like say this is a bad mode or this is a good mode. Like in concept, I like it, mm -hmm. but I need to see the like the difficulty of it because if it's like if we say it's like lunatic level uh, abyssal, then or, it's gonna... no, not no lunatic level GBA thing. It's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be like the easiest thing because you got a bunch of structures that do like twenty damage. Yeah, on command. So what's the point? Right, and here's the thing: like these structures are crazy. They also blurred one out, by the way. What? Yeah. Why would, yeah. Uh, that was uh, Legion said it was like to block the possible spoilers from later because oh. each one is based on the realms. So you're right. And that that wasn't me. That was Legion. <laughs> he just left. So Legion's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah, this is. Uh... There's only one problem with this. It's just. Here's the thing, if it's too easy, if it's too easy, no one's going to care. If it's too hard, it adds another mode that everyone has to kind of do whenever it shows up. Well, at least it'll be interesting because mm -hmm. uh, at the very least, you have some leeway because of the towers. So it could be fun for both like casuals. It could be a little bit more difficult for the more casual players, and then it could be a fun time for more... I know hardcore people, but, but at the same time, most of the people that play FEH are casual. So that's why I was I was going. I'm I'm honestly kind of certain it's going to lean towards being here. Yeah, if it's middling difficulty, I think it's going to be okay. I don't think it's going to be the best mode. Okay, here's the other problem. That score you said is based on arena. Is it, what, yeah, what I, I said I said that's based on arena, but we don't know how that's going to work exactly because we're counting mythics as well. So. Here's the thing. If it's based on arena, it's in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Because for most players, if they're going for top scores, which is everybody who's being competitive or trying to go for top scores, right? I guess I guess it might not make a difference if you can just go enough times to make up for make up for the lost score. I I maybe that's how they plan it to do it. But otherwise, if it forces us to use our best scoring teams, it's like the dumbest setups, right? Like no positional skills. We'll use rally pluses instead. Um, instead of using like the best heroes, like say Altina or something, we'll go up heroes we have more merges of, which usually are free yeah. play heroes. It could be disastrous like that. If it's if it becomes about score, though, I'm hoping it's not like like that, and we don't know for certain yet. But if it is to be something like along the lines of score, I'm hoping it leans more towards. Um, allegiance battle scoring because that's a lot more reasonable easier yeah. to, easier like it's a lot more reasonable since you just have to have a mythic basically which yeah. is well, there's no bonus scoring though so. yeah so it's already a little bit better yeah um but honestly that kind of just makes sense since why would you have bonus units here since that just be unreasonable because you're dealing with like eight parrips or eight units basically so what's the point of having bonus right okay here's what i didn't understand isn't counter just the same thing as shield but you just play another round and this time you got to use arrows uh i'm not exactly sure on that like towards the end i kind of just like at this point i started skimming through the video yeah, um i don't believe yeah, you yeah um to well, me, it's just, the straight is a bit wonky. It it looks like VG. That's it looks that's like VG. It looks like VG. They're reusing VG here. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, it looks like Advanced Wars, see. actually, guys. Have you guys ever played Advanced Wars? That looks like the attack and defense. IS made Advanced Wars, by the way. You guys didn't know. <laughs> IS copies itself yet again. <laughs> um, in all seriousness, um, this mode is just like a hot, a hot pot of just like all the different, modes. all the other modes. I don't know how they're going to do it ex execution wise. That's had has yet to be seen. It could be fun, but I don't know. Just like based on past history, how good it will be. For all we know, it could be Relay Defense again. <laughs> yeah, uh, if you guys don't know what Relay Defense is, it's because it's a mode that we only had for a couple months and then just... They didn't... This actually kind of feels like Relay Defense. No. Because instead of attacking the Relays, we're defending. Actually, no, they're both defending. You heard it here first. This is Relay Defense 2. <laughs> this is Relay Defense 2. Alright, here's the other thing that I was kind of irked about was just that we're getting more flowers and these new resources. Here's the thing, the new resources shouldn't really matter that much. They matter for the mode, but I'm saying if you're a general player and you don't care for the mode, it's literally you're just playing for flowers now. Uh, yeah, um, we don't know like the max tier rewards either. This is just like tier one stuff. Yep. But um, the flowers, I'm, I'm guessing it's gonna go up to 40, like every other mode, or 50. Um, flowers and feathers. Gonna go. Huh? Oh, uh, no, I was just going to say, um, there's a, also the other currency we know nothing about because they yeah. didn't bother explaining it. They just said, hey, this is a thing. And it will explain it later on when it's necessary. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so far it's looking like resources, general resources are just flowers and feathers, which unfortunately, I mean, it's always nice to have more feathers. It's always nice to have more flowers, but unfortunately it's not like more orbs and I'll just be honest, the, the, the greatest resource in this game is actually orbs, because if you had enough orbs, you could make the, the, your heroes, the, the hero you want, the best as possible they can be. Like, it's just the more valuable resource. But yeah. Anyways, it looks like each round is literally just a day, from like 8th of December to 9th of December, for example. So, I don't know, yeah. I'm interested in seeing what it is, but they literally took 14 minutes to explain that mode, so they're banking very hard on this. The problem is um, last year we got ether raids and we were super excited for it. And over time, a lot of people lost excitement over it. And I'm hoping this is just even more convoluted, so I see know. I gotta I gotta break something to Nims. What? This is not a mode. This is not even a mode, you're right, it's an event. It's an event. So it's not even like gonna be here all the time. Oh my so let's God. say let's say it's even is good because my favorite mode is G C. Yeah. Let's say it's like G C. So it's even if people month. like it, so even if people like it, it's not even going to be here all the time. Once a month. And here, here's the, okay, at this point of the video, guys, I want to be clear, I was very worried. All they were showing was a small quality of life change. Let me be clear, it, this does save time. It saves like 20, 30 seconds at most. But like, we're 15 minutes into the video and you've literally just shown two things and not everyone is excited about the new mode. If they're not excited about the new mode, you can't really expect them to be that excited about the new um, quality of life change that saves them about a bit of time. Because that was it. Yeah, the quality of life change is nice, but like... It, yeah, I mean, I, I'm really... just really clear. This felt skimpy. It felt like <laughs> it felt like every Fae channel before at this time of year had been better. You don't have to share that opinion, but that's what it felt like to me. I mean, it's only like one thing. It's quite, it's really nice, but you know, I wish they did a little bit more. Yeah. I wish they included this like a lot earlier. Mm. I, I, I do too. Because I feel like this should have been added forever ago since it's this like navigating skill list has just been annoying overall since all the new modes. And yeah. Just added more menus and just back and forth. It's kind. Of, it gets annoying. After it gets a while. annoying because they changed like everything up. I still remember the time when they put in like edit equip skills and it, it just reshuffled resh everything. And then I could never got get used to it for some reason. Yeah. Anyways, um, the Thracia banner. Oh, we're summoning after this, guys. Don't worry. But the Thracia banner. Here's a. I was really hoping for far fetched. It felt like they just. It felt like they didn't plan it out. It felt like they had this banner that was coming out at this time, and they were like, we have nothing else to show. We didn't do Farfetch this year, so let's just feature this banner. Because Gracia did not release in the West, 
But the problem is, most people can't get excited about this because most people did not play Thracia. They couldn't possibly play Thracia. And that's my one, that's that's like, that's already a huge worry. And the only thing they did differently was throwing the new hero into the banner. So. Yeah. Um, when it comes to this, uh, I wasn't really expecting Farfetch at this point. It already was it's like, really late. Yeah. Yeah, it's really late. So uh, I was like, I kept this to myself, but I was under like the assumption that they were swapping around things for the schedule. So they're going to do things a lot more differently next year. So things might not set like follow the set pattern we've established. Yeah, that we've so seen. Far. I get it. Yeah. Um I'm assuming they're doing all these banners in like in a disorganized order because they're setting up for like three houses. Three houses? What? Y yeah, for next year, since they kind of skimped out on this Oh year. yeah, they have to return to that eventually, right? They're gonna return to that eventually and they're gonna go full force on it, pretty sure. I hope they do that because uh, three houses is the best thing, best thing that's happened in Fire Emblem games. I'm assuming that this is like just like all the banners that we've I gotten know. so far. Yeah, it's mostly because of just like the response they've gotten from last year, where there were just like too many Fates banners. Please add more from the other games. And, and then they just want too many old banners. And Fates <laughs> literally disappeared. And then next year it's going to be too many three houses banners, and it just the cycle's just going to keep going and going and going and going until everyone's sick of Faye and just give up. <laughs> okay, let's not talk about that. But let's talk about the new story. <laughs> I want to hear from you. Are you excited? This literally looks like Disneyland to me. Is that actually a question? <laughs> yes, it's a question. Just say it. <laughs> uh, I'm not expecting anything from it. Oh. I do. I do. I do like the like the initial cutscene. I think it's a pretty cool setting, but it's very weird. <laughs> I have no idea who thought about this. This looks like Alphonse is on LSDs. <laughs> the writer might as well have been on LSDs. Doing drugs is bad. Don't do from... drugs, then run it by the, the board of directors, and and by some miracle, they agree to this. This feels wrong. <laughs> this doesn't feel right at all. Like, what Fire Emblem setting has ever had friggin' fairies flying around? This just does not feel like Fire Emblem at this point. I like, the, I like that they're trying something different, but you literally go from hell to, like, sparkles and colors everywhere this <laughs> we went we went from um edgelord city to fairly odd parents <laughs> yeah <laughs> and do you see this battle like how the hell does this how the hell is alphonse and shrina supposed to keep up do, do you know why alphonse hasn't shown up in this cutscene so far the man's busy running up a tree right now <laughs> there he is oh yeah you wanted to keep up with flying fairies and shit my dude, <laughs> you're not gonna keep up. This is what he gets for trying. <laughs> but this is the interesting concept that they hinted at with the story. Every time he dies, it restarts. Like, all you need is kill or edge of tomorrow, depending on where you are. But like... Yeah, that concept is interesting, I guess. It just, I don't know, this feels weird. This, this I does, like... Yeah? I like the style. I like the style. I think she's mad cute. You know, I, I like... No, okay, I, I don't like this. <laughs> Sorry. I already thought last year of Hell and all that, so it was way too edgy, and now this is way too frilly. Uh, at least they don't... I don't think they gave us a lot of spoiler. At least she's super cute, but I thought Air was super cute, too, so... Air has a, one of the best backs in the game. This looks like a Tony Taka art to me, to be honest. Uh, anyways, there's a lot of imagery here. Alphonse is going on another journey, another adventure, and this time it's to wake everybody up. I hope he's not waking everybody up on, you know, the status of this game and its decline. I hope you need to wake up people in another way that to make things better. But yeah. Anyways, the two villain girls look pretty interesting. I guess. They're hot. I don't know. I have no expectations here either. I, I was excited before I saw this, and once I saw it, I wasn't excited. That's just the, the truth, guys. The art is nice. <laughs> art is nice it just doesn't feel like it's fitting at this point at this point why don't you just do a crossover I, chat let me ask you this feh extra gear lost would that feel more right than this i think it's pretty obvious feh extra gear lost would feel a lot more 
more um more fitting than this. Literally, Pixie Land feels wrong. Yeah, it wouldn't. <laughs> Uh, the the most we got, I, the most I'm expecting from a crossover like that is an announcement in, in the notifications board. <laughs> yeah, see, Will Scott's saying it's not even a question, right? Uh, oh yeah, chat. That's unfortunate. Yeah, FEH is never doing. Got to say, I'm going to the make the metal music the in best chance three. we got is um, <laughs> Tokyo Mario Sessions. <laughs> that is, yeah. <laughs> and that's the saddest thing. <laughs> yeah anyways guys um that's the banner uh we'll talk about the banner after we're gonna summon right after this but um that's our thoughts on this i'm sorry if it's if we're not super excited and, and you are if you enjoy this i'm glad right i'm i'm glad if you're gonna have fun with the game and whatnot but from my personal view from three years into this game i'm just i don't know anymore man it's just at least last year i was kind of interested in the story this year i'm just i don't even know what this is about anymore like the, the the cinematics literally told me nothing. All I know was like we visited this fairyland some, for some reason, and then there's an evil ghoul that came out, and now we gotta defeat the evil ghoul. And then later on we find out it's because everyone's asleep, so we gotta wake them up. It just literally feels like it, it feels like Peter Panish, you know, if they just ran with that concept. I'm just gonna put my hands up. I'll I'll experience it before I really judge it, but it's really hard to get excited about this. It just feels wrong. It just feels weird. But yeah, that's our fate channel. Unfortunately, it's unlike other years where we got a bunch of free stuff or a bunch of excitement announcements. Because I remember our first one, like Joshua was our free hero from Tempest Trials. Everyone got excited about that. Uh, this new fairy girl is not for everybody. She's cute and all, but um, I mean she's really good. She's really don't get me wrong. She's really good. But she's uh. She's not quite the same thing as, as what that first year was. Or the second year for that matter. Anyways, whatever. Let's go summon.